but I didn't know how to go about it. And so I'm like, okay, when I get out of college, let's go to law school. I'll go to law school, get certified as an agent, and start representing players. So what happened was, went to TCNJ, graduated from there, went to Seton Hall Law School, and went there for three years, was on a sports law journal they had there, wrote an article on agents that got published. And then from there, um, at two years, I worked as a regular attorney and stuff like that, and I started my own practice. And I started representing football players and get cert- I got certified as an NFL agent with the Players, players Association. And then I started recruiting. I went out and started recruiting and stuff like that and to, to get guys. And, um, and McCarthy, I know McCarthy's dad, you know, Dennis McCarthy was a great buddy of mine. Yeah. You know, passed you know, away. passed away. Great dude. Great yeah. guy. And so you uh, keep, in, keep in touch with Dave. Yeah. Dave's a good dude. Yeah. We, we, we you know, correspond back and forth all the time. Dave's going to be on tomorrow. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Well, tomorrow. tell him I said hello. He's a great yeah. dude. Great yeah. guy. He knows we was talking about football. 100%. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so then, you know, I got my first client. My first client was Neil Rackers, kicker for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was my first guy. And he got drafted by the Bengals. And then it's like any other business, word of mouth. Did a good job for Neil. He told Shane Graham. He told Josh Brown. Next you know, I got four or five guys in the league. And here we are 20 years later. Now, so you're looking as an agent right now. Are you looking at some of these college players that are sophomores, juniors, and you have yeah. good relations with some of the coaches, maybe on yeah. a high or co- yeah, so it's kind of a catch because you know these big Division One A schools they like to showcase all these agents uh, to people. It gets kind of confusing, isn't that? Would you think? Yeah, but a lot of times you know they'll have an agent day where the agents will come in and 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 talk about what they do and stuff like that. I've been at a bunch of those schools doing that, um, and then a lot of times the co- college coaches will refer you players. Okay, so you got a college coach you do a good job for who refer you guys. You talk to this guy and stuff like that. You yeah. go and you meet, you meet with the kid and, and you go from there and see what happens. Yeah, right. but, but you're able to talk to a kid, a college kid, you know, you're able to talk to them prior to them being done playing football in college. You know, there's one of those myths that you're not able to talk to the guys. But you're able to talk to them. You just can't buy them anything. You can't, you know, give them anything monetary value. You can't give them a ride. Right. Um, but you can talk to them, talk to their parents and stuff like that and recruit them. When, when, can, done. You, when can you first start dialogue talking to a kid? You, you know, whenever you want. Really? You know, he's, yeah, he's got to follow the rules. If there's a state, if it's depending on what state it is in, you got to make sure you're certified with the state. And then you can't, you know, basically, you should let the school know. Each school has their own policy, how they deal with the agents and stuff like that. And so you got to go by the school. That, chain of that, command. Chain of command. You got to go by that school, how they actually operate. So you're telling so, me it is it is legal to at least build a relationship with a freshman in college? Yeah, definitely. Wow, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. I yeah. did not know that. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, and, and I'm sure there's agents talking to high school kids out there too. But I don't know about that. I mean, I'm sure basketball the high school kids are they're talking to high school kids because mm-hmm. basketball they're getting kids going out yeah. one year, one and done. Um, I mean, I think there's guys talking to kids in eighth grade from basketball, but it's just a different, different, you know, different sport, yeah, different, different way to do it. Different way to do it. Different. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Again, guys, I'm talking to Rob Roach, my buddy, NFL agent for 20 years. I'm proud to have him right here. Now, Rob, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself the next ten years? Don't on a beach, on a beach somewhere, relaxing, you know, and not no. answering my calls, right? <laughs> I, can, I can see that too. Yeah, no, 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 definitely answer your call, Rob. No matter where you are, I always answer your call. How many years do you got left? Uh, I don't know. I mean, listen, they just did a new labor agreement for ten years, so I'm 49. Not to spill the beans, but I'm 49 years old. I'll be 59 by that point, you know. So we'll see what happens. Now, do you, I mean, are you involved with the NFL like in terms of pension too? That- <coughs> no, nothing like no. that. No. Okay. No. So, yeah. So, what it, the way it works, Rob, is I'm certified by the NFL Players Association to represent football players. So, basically, every year I got to recertify with the NFL PA and keep my certification up to be certified to be able to represent football players in the NFL. So, basically, right. I got to pay a fee. So they try and be yeah. What's that, Rob? Why do they do that to make sure that they got the right type of guys going around those kids? Yeah, they got to want to make sure their their constituency, the, the, you know, the, the NFL Players Association wants to make sure those players are being represented properly. So they want to make sure that the agents know what they're talking about, able to do an effective, good job for the players and stuff like that. Now, it's got to be tough on the other side. You probably sitting with parents that kids think they're higher than who they are down the road. Like, in other words, the guy might think he's a fourth or fifth round draft pick 
and he realistically may be looking at just a signee as a free agent for camps. Is that tough speaking to a kid um, after the draft goes by and say, you know, and let's regroup and, and let's get back on, on, the, on a different path and get to the goal you want to get to? Well, I'll tell you, the key thing in my job is under promise and over deliver. So you want to under promise and over deliver for what you, you meet with the client. So when I meet with the client, I'm not trying to build up his expectations because if you do that and it doesn't work out, then you got a problem. Uh-huh. So try to be realistic with the player. Say, this is where I see you. Get the feedback from the teams and the coaches and the scouts. And as much as they'll tell you, give that feedback back and say, this is where we see you. This is where we see you going. If you're going to get drafted, you're going to get drafted from here to here. And then if not, this is where we see you. This is the plan of action we want to take. And I always plan for worst case scenario. You know, it's part of my job. Uh-huh. It's to make sure if you're not drafted, we're going to have a top 10 list of where to go after the draft. So you are talking to other people just in case, too, uh, later on. Yeah, other teams, you mean, for guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. No matter how many teams say they want to draft your guy, you never know what happens. You never know what happens. So you always got to make sure you got plan B locked in. Yeah. Now, do, do, do you have a certain guy out there that gives you a, a, a mock draft or a projection type thing? Do you, have, do you go by a certain person? No. I others? mean, I talk to coaches. I talk to coaches in terms of the position of the guys you got. You talk to the coaches, and you, you can kind of get the sense of the terms you get a feel based upon the, the level of interest in your players. Right? You know, you get a level of interest right. in the players you get a sense of where you see the kid drafted. Yeah, 100%. And if they go to the combine, if they're, you know, if they're going to the combine, they're having team vi- – when they're able to do team visits, we can't do it this year, but you have team visits and stuff like that, you, you can get a sense of where they're going to go. But anyone tells you – My next where- question is – Yeah? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. If anybody tells you or tells a kid, we know where you're going to get drafted, we, you know, we know exactly where you're going to get drafted, you know, they're full of donkey dust because nobody knows. Unless you're the first you know, joke, you know, quarterback from LSU, you know, he's going to get drafted by the Bengals, presumably. Now, okay. now, next thing is when you're negotiating a contract, who is on the other side of the table? All depends on the team. Each team has a different, you know, structure of how they do it. Um, most teams have a contract negotiator on their staff, and that's primarily who you're dealing with. You're dealing with the but contract the negotiator. G- you're not with well, the GM? Well, a lot of times you'll, you'll talk to the GM. But the actual negotiation is done with the contract negotiator. And is it face yeah. to face or is it a fax? All depends. A lot of times we we'll do it via the phone. But if you have other events, you have a scouting combine or something like that, you're going to meet at. You go talk to them about the deal with the scouting combine. Um, owners meetings always good too. You talk to guys there. Um, All star games, Senior Bowl, you talk to guys there down in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's most of most of the time you can do it over the phone and do it via email and stuff like that easy nowadays since we're so sad with technology it's just a lot easier you go to, you go to the combines every year yeah every year down in february down in Indianapolis. and is that, is that how you kind of get a hold of those clients or maybe they already they don't have no nah, by the time the combine rolls around rob they're all signed up with agents they're all locked really? up really yeah so so you're, the comp- you're just network yeah, I have to go to then. I have to go to a seminar there every year for agents. NFL PA has a seminar every there year for that. But you go there for that, and and plus you got all the play personnel directors and stuff like that there at that time. So if you got free agents coming up in free agency, you're able to actually talk yeah. to the guys, you know, about your guys and try to work out some deals at that point. Yeah, a couple guys came a little bit later. Again, this is Rob Roach, NFL agent for 20 years, my buddy in college. Uh, that we've been talking about his side of the football side of aspect of what he does uh, in, in difference from what I do with the football, with the high school kids. But are my kids that I coach, they look up to that scenario of an agent like yourself, helping them get to that next level, of course, which is the league with that. Next time my kids go to college, they, um, you know, they, they, they talk about, I want to go to the league and that, and then reality sets in that so the league, but, there are other uh, ways to you can get paid with football playing. There's a CFL, there's arena. Yep. Uh, there was the XFL. XFL, well the couple weeks ago. I had one player in the XFL, yeah, Matt McCrane. He was on the Guardians, kicker for the uh, Guardians. He's real good, 10 for 10, did really well. And I, I tell you what, I love watching XFL. It was great. I watched it, it was, every weekend. I, I, I thought mean, it was really going to do well. 
as an agent, you got to like when those other things open up, right? Yeah, yeah. I was hoping that they're actually going to start signing guys to bigger deals. Right. Right? Yeah. But I think they were a victim of the pandemic. I'll tell you, um, you know, hopefully we, we clear this pandemic out and we get back to normal way. I think that football in the NFL is going to slide over. Um, well, I know I'm hearing college football might slide to the spring. Um, yeah, but we I don't, heard that. We don't, we don't know. It's, but I will tell you, Rob, we'll tell you, I want to tell you, you know, with the players I represent and the guys I recruit and stuff like that to come out of college, it's always key and important for me to get to know who their high school coach was because the high school coaches for a lot of these guys is such a sphere of influence and a center of influence for these guys right. that you, 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 got, you play a big part, you know, you yourself and other high school coaches play a big part in the development of those kids and they trust you guys. Listen, Rob, another talk could be phone calls I get once you get to camp because I'm, I'm not going to say who, but I've had head D one A football coaches call me up with their coordinators, saying, "Talk to their homesick. They're not big dog now right. at our, you know, place. Can you give him a pep talk? And this might be ten at night. I got to get up and call up a certain guy, and all of a sudden, everything's great. You know, when we went to college, yeah. we, you know, we always had doubts, and those kids are no different. When they leave and right. go, they have it so good at Barnicket. And when they go somewhere else, it's so funny. Kids will always say, hey, coach, this isn't Barnicket. No crap. You're at so-and-so, so-and-so. And you're getting a full scholarship. Go. Have fun. Yeah. And all that. That's the great thing right. in my job is to have them move to, you know, we always say you want to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in life. Right. You know, right, yeah. and that goes when they, that could be when you get older, you got to speak in front of groups of people. You got to do something like this live, where people can, you know, mock us, which we are not. We are we're having a darn good interview right now. I'll tell you right Hopefully now. Hopefully not. Good. Hopefully not. But I'm just saying, you want to make sure that we have our kids and our coaches feeling comfortable with being uncomfortable. That is something hopefully that they can take to their next profession when they go there too, because everything's not going to be easy, and especially no, when you're, you're right. in a competitive world. You're in a competitive world. People. 